How can I help you? Yes, I was wondering, is there an available coronavirus test? You know, not everybody gets a test that depends on symptoms, if you're symptomatic. Oh, you don't think it's a good idea for everyone to get a test? There aren't enough tests available to give just everybody a test. People who are asymptomatic, um, because there's a shortage of tests, we're not going to test somebody who shows no symptoms. I see. Do you think it's something to worry about? Why are you worried? Well, naturally, with the situation. You haven't traveled, traveled, you haven't been around with anybody that has coronavirus? No, I don't know anybody with it. Okay, so you're probably just fine. Even if they did test you and you had it, if you weren't under respiratory distress, mm -hmm. like your oxygen level's super low, they would just tell you to go home and self-quarantine yourself for 14 days. Are your hospitals full? Are they full? Yeah. Are there a bunch of people in there with it? Um, no. There no? are not. Oh, okay. Well, that's good news. I appreciate everything. Alrighty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Today we're going to look at an insane asylum in Ohio. Also, the Woodward Gardens of San Francisco, the Bronx Zoo in New York City, and again, the Sutro Baths in San Francisco. Welcome. First of all, I wanted to have a little look at this little post on StolenHistory.org. The coronavirus, is it the catalyst to a technocratic new world order? And I still don't believe in this epidemic. Clearly something is going on, but not what we're being told. And what is a certainty? Is the restructuring of a world and the acceleration of it in a very short amount of time. Perhaps this is just a big test. And I recently watched a video by an expert talking about the falsities of viruses and how we know very little about the subject. Very similar to the CGI they give us as depictions of space. We get similar CGI when it comes to science and the inner workings of our realm. As above, so below, it seems. And this video, I'll try to link it before I'm done, was talking about the virus being nothing more than a byproduct of cellular damage. And when the cell takes in either toxins or electromagnetic damage or a destructuring, the byproduct is a shedding of the cell, a purging of the damaged material. And if I understood it correctly, this is what science is calling a virus. Simply the repair mechanism of the cellular structure itself. And if this is the case, all we need to do is keep our immune system strong and our self-repairing machines that we call bodies should take care of the rest. And what about these tests? What do we see going on right now? The isolation of people, online educations, kids to be homeschooled by the government, essentially. Online shopping, a much tighter control of how things are bought and sold. And of course, the war on cash. I'm seeing this in my coffee shop. Many businesses are refusing cash. And what a perfect way to roll out a cashless society. Of course, the rolling out of 5G and many theories that this may be one of the agendas. While well, everybody is stuck at home, turning a blind eye to what's really possibly going on. And of course, an economic collapse. Most people have lost their nest eggs and will be more than willing to accept the mass printing of currency in the form of bailouts and printing money out of thin air. And the veneration of scientific or expert opinions. I'm sure many of you have noticed this, talking to your friends and families. Everybody reciting the scientific BS as fact and a reverence for the experts. And in such times, their credibility was certainly at an all-time low. And most certainly vaccines are coming down the pike. And what else will be in these vaccines? Personally, I would never take such a vaccine, especially in lieu of the lies we've been told 
and seeming like a perfect opportunity to implement such measures. And I'm reminded of the expression that those who would give up their liberties for safety deserve neither liberty or safety. And as always, I encourage everyone to look at this mainstream propaganda with a skeptical eye. And with that said, let's look at some history. Is it possible to build this in seven years? This was just shared with me in a comment by William Ohio. I thank you for this. Is it possible today with modern equipment to build something like this in seven years? They say this was the largest building under one roof in the nation until the construction of the Pentagon in Washington. And this beautiful building is located in Ohio. What would you imagine this building to be? Surely the grandest of grand purposes would be assigned to such a building. Perhaps a royal palace? Perhaps a cathedral? And these men seem to be surveying the grounds for such a building we might imagine thousands of people around here but looking rather abandoned and old and yet this is the new construction of the ohio insane asylum 800 rooms designed in an early time period we are told to house the mentally ill so what can we make of these lunatic asylums? Really seeming like some grand residence built on 300 acres. Here this depiction is supposed to be in 1868. Here it shows the date built in 1835 and burnt in 1868. All this just to burn. And this is said to be an original Painting made by an asylum patient. I'm not sure if there's a hill here or wearing a balloon. And clearly some very talented patients in this hospital. And Dr. William, the asylum's first superintendent, the first institution burnt down, plans to rebuild began quickly on a 300 acre tract. 1870 to 1877 and a cost of 1.5 million dollars. By the turn of the century, it housed nearly 3,000 patients in 1935. However, one drawback was the large size of the rooms made them difficult to maintain with fluctuating state funding. It was demolished in the early 1990s to make way for state office buildings. And here the Wikipedia entry very very short the original hospital known as the asylum of ohio was completed in 1838 destroyed in 1868 and it was rebuilt and closed in the 1980s and finally demolished clearly wanting to keep this one on the down low and let's look at some more pictures an absolute beauty and what was this really anything but an insane asylum. And here we're going to have a little look at the Woodward Gardens. And what if San Francisco was over a thousand years old and everything we see has been torn down as a way to hide the histories? Anything that may fit into the narrative was repurposed. And of course we've looked at the World's Fairs in San Francisco and a few of the buildings remaining clearly anything but temporary but there were more such sites such sites that would be perfectly adequate to use as a world's fair or a zoo and this is an example of another one the woodward's garden a combination amusement park museum art gallery zoo and aquarium operating from 1866 to 1891 in the mission district the gardens covered two city blocks, and the current site has a brick building built after the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. 
and the former garden site also features the current location of the San Francisco Armory. And here we can have a look at this massive brick armory. And here we're told the gardens were owned and operated by Robert B. Woodward, who became wealthy during the gold rush of 1849. And really not mentioning anything about the construction, just telling us that he opened the garden on the site of his four-acre estate. In 1877, it was open to the public for a fee of 25 cents. And here we can have a little look in 1877. Really impressive and not seeming as if this was built as an aquarium or a zoo or even gardens, but clearly having a greater purpose. And here a little depiction of the people, very primitive, horse and buggy era, a city that is supposed to sprout out of a gold rush, and these are the types of amusements we're told existed. A fine example of the old world and the repurposing of it. And here I just wanted to have a little quick look at some photos of this entrance to the Woodward's Garden and very royal and exquisite in 1876. So San Francisco is founded in 1849 and about 25 years later residents are building things like this and like this and like this. This being the Palace of Fine Arts one of the few structures remaining, and absolutely not a temporary structure. And again, to pose the question, could this city be a thousand years old? And when we look at the photos pre-earthquake, it seems the city was filled with this type of architecture. And perhaps the great fire and earthquake was nothing more than a big demolition job as we can see here and really seeming to be the condition and the remains of what we have inherited in this present reality and perhaps our reality and our history began as little as a hundred years ago perhaps the so-called spanish flu is pointing to a time of a reset and a hundred years later we're all wondering if this is what we're seeing in this moment in time. We know by now that nothing is as we're told and usually everything is in plain sight. And this Woodward Garden really reminded me of the Bronx Zoo, one of the largest zoos in the United States comprising of 265 acres. And this seeming like a clear example of a repurposed area similar to world's fairs perhaps being great central complexes in the old world serving much more important roles than the amusing designations that we tend to give them and this may not seem too interesting until we have a look at some of the architecture found in this bronx zoo and let's just have a little look at some of the architecture in this Bronx Zoo. Really impressive and not seeming very zoo-like. For whatever reason, they needed the education center and such a fine administration building and the exterior of the zoo center. A very beautiful building and clearly looking like something we'd see anywhere in the world other than a zoo. Very weathered, and we see some elephants on either side, and the interior. Examples of tile work in the former elephant house. Very interesting, and very unzoo like And sometimes we don't know. We really don't know the purpose, and the designation is ridiculous. And here, back in San Francisco, built in 1896, are the Sutro Baths, a privately owned public 
swimming pool complex. Not far from the cliff house, a beautiful structure that burnt down and was rebuilt. The sutro baths were open to the public as the world's largest indoor swimming pool establishment. They were built by a wealthy entrepreneur and former mayor of San Francisco. And here's a little look at him, a politician and philanthropist. The baths struggled for years mostly due to the very high operating and maintenance costs. No talk of the construction as of yet. And in present day, both Cliff House and bath sites are operated by the National Park Service. And finally, in 1966, a fire destroyed the building while it was in the process of being demolished. And pretty much all that remains are the pools. Here a little look in 1896. And in their words, a close view at the ruins of this bathhouse. And something that would be interesting to explore. And in this particular part, I wanted to share something that was shared with me. This is a Twitter video posted April 1st. And this gives a little insight as to what is going on while everybody else is locked in their homes. We see utility companies installing 5G networks. And here this man is trying to ask a question of this worker and he's being completely ignored. I will leave the link to this below for you. And eventually he pulls out an electromagnetic reading device, probably an app on his phone, and the signal is going off the charts. And this is being installed right next to a children's playground in a park. And just busy at it. No shutdown for these crews. Seeming to be taking advantage of this opportunity. Very interesting. And here I wanted to share a little video by William Shira. I'll leave the link to his channel as well. This was actually posted in 2015. Ancient American Civilizations. Very fascinating. A little ahead of the game. And really ties in with the research that we explore on this and other channels. And at first I didn't find it that remarkable. He does show very interesting stones on the outside here. A lot of unnatural seeming stones, uh, what looks like block work from a time long ago. And again impressive, but not as impressive as we can see towards the end of the video. And I'm glad I watched the whole thing through. Again, seeming very natural in some spots. And what he does is he sticks his camera in this hole. And this is the part that I want to show you. Absolutely fascinating. And here we are. Now looking in a bored hole in what seems like natural mountain. And what we get is what looks like brick on the inside. Red brick. And from the outside, much more natural seeming. And I was just really amazed to see this discovery. It might be worth checking out some more of his videos. And really lending to this idea that mountains may not be mountains at all. Well, I think that's it for today. I do hope you enjoyed. And do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.